Welcome to our first history clip for this summer's Hands-On History at Your House. For the next few weeks, we will explore the history of the people of the Mahoning Valley with these short videos, online activities, and museum challenges. For more information, be sure to visit our website, mahoninghistory.org. This week, we're taking a look back at the very first people who lived right here in the Mahoning Valley, our indigenous people, the Native Americans. To learn about their history and heritage, we need to travel back more than 15,000 years ago. The Earth was in its last major ice age with glaciers, ice, and snow covering much of what we know as North America. While water separates present-day Alaska from Russia, during the Ice Age, this area was a frozen land bridge known as the Bering Strait. Over the course of generations, people migrated throughout this region and then further south and east into present-day Canada and the Pacific Northwest in what we know as the United States. Now, how long ago was this? Some say it was around 15,000 years ago, but other researchers, historians, and archaeologists think it could have been as many as 30 or 35,000 years ago. As time moved on, Native Americans began moving further to the east across the Rocky Mountains and Great Plains and eventually to our part of the world, here in what we call Northeast Ohio. This region was right on the edge of the ice shelf, the area where the glaciers met snow-covered land. And around 13,000 years ago, those glaciers began to melt and a rich, fertile forest appeared. The first people who lived in this area were Paleolithic people. They lived here from around 14,000 to 10,000 years ago. And yes, these time frames are really long and really big and difficult for most adults and really most everyone to understand. The Paleolithic people lived in small groups and followed large animals to hunt while also gathering fruits and other plant-based foods to eat. They were the classic definition of hunters and gatherers. The people did not farm or grow crops or live in villages or towns. And we don't know a lot about their daily lives as their items are incredibly rare and most have not survived to today. They were very migrant and probably did not live in one place for very long, moving with the large herds of animals and as the weather changed throughout the seasons. One of those large animals was the American Mastodon, and it was huge. These giants are extinct now, but they would have walked the land around this region thousands and thousands of years ago. They looked a lot like today's elephants and could be anywhere from 7 to 10 feet tall and weigh more than 10 tons. And they were pretty similar to their cousin, the woolly mammoth. The lifestyle of these paleo people began to change around 9,000 years ago as the super large animals, like the mastodon, began to become extinct. People were forced to hunt smaller animals, like elk and bear, and we call these people the archaic people. They lived from about 9,000 to 4,000 years ago. They still gathered food like their ancestors did, but there is evidence that they lived a little bit differently. Like, many had permanent homes in the wintertime and used stone tools for cooking. Now, around 3,000 years ago, lives changed again, and this time it was with farming. Before then, native peoples gathered fruits and plants, which grew naturally in the forest. But now, their scientific advancements allowed them to harvest crops and cultivate fruits and vegetables. Common foods were corn, various types of squash like pumpkins and zucchini, and beans. They still hunted and fished, but farming was their main source of food. They also began living together in communities and eventually in villages and even what you might call small towns or cities. They lived in small shelters called wigwams made of sticks and tree barks or large buildings called longhouses, which housed several families together. The towns were surrounded by a wall to help with safety against enemies and animals. Everything in their lives came from the earth, from their clothes made of animal skins and jewelry made of shells and stones, to their tools carved from wood, and even their canoes built from the hollowed out trunks of trees. They gave us many of the sports we enjoy today, like lacrosse and even running track. They also gave us many of the names which surround us every single day, like Mahoning, a Lenape word for salt lick or Ohio, a Seneca word which means great river or good flowing stream. Cuyahoga is a Mohawk word which means crooked river, and across the border into what we know as Pennsylvania, the word Allegheny is pretty popular, and that's a Lenape word meaning beautiful stream. 
These woodland era people joined together to create large tribes. They had their own languages, political and government systems, religion, and culture. We call this era the Woodland Era because this region, along with basically half of North America, was one giant forest. Their culture and way of life advanced and grew, and they had well-defined systems of trade among various tribes. It is this culture that the white European settlers will meet when they arrive on the Atlantic coast around 600 years ago. Over those 600 years, relationships between settlers and Native Americans were often filled with war, heartbreaking tragedies, and broken promises. Many Native Americans were forced westward and eventually onto reservations. Throughout this time, though, their heritage and legacy continue to grow and is still strongly with us, impacting our world and making history today. One of those recent history-making moments was when Deb Holland became the Secretary of the Department of the Interior. She was one of the first Native Americans to serve in the U.S. Congress and is the first Native American to ever serve as a cabinet-level secretary. She's a member of the Pueblo of Laguna and a 35th generation New Mexican. Now that you've learned more about Native American history and the first people who lived right here in the Mahoning Valley, be sure to check out our website for your hands-on history at your house activities. You can become a proud museum assistant by completing all of those activities, or learn even more and become a museum curator by researching a local tribe and learning a few more things about their daily lives. All of the challenge information can be found on our website and be sure to share your creations online with the hashtag history at my house 2021. We'll see you next week.